I feel like the last time we did this, we were both pretty loopy. Like we had just gone through covering the draft for three days straight. I'm feeling in a better frame of mind right now. Yeah. Did you get some, uh, did you get some sleep to catch up? Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling good. Feeling refreshed. I've enjoyed the weather the last couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about how we both, we both lost like Sunday was like the nicest day. It was perfect. And we both just ended up inside watching the Sixers. Yeah. What a, what a waste of time that was. And I'm like, I'm mad at myself more than I'm mad at the team. Like I should have known to go outside and like I could have I could have just been sitting. I could have gone kayaking. I could have I, I could have done a lot of things on Sunday. One o'clock is there's like no way to. It's the middle of your day. Yeah. I'm more mad at the team. Yeah, I, I should have I should have expected it. They've given up over 600 offensive rebounds in the series. Feels like that. It's, I'm not going to fact check you there because it feels right. They in the fourth quarter of that game, game four, the Knicks missed. The Knicks missed 15 shots, and they had seven offensive rebounds. So they they rebounded and they scored like you know like 12 points off those shots. They they got offensive re they got more rebounds on their own missed shots than the Sixers did. I mean, or I think it was one less. But I, I mean, I've never seen a team give up more offensive rebounds in my life. It's it was just, insane. It's effort. It's just effort, and it's yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And I covered Josh Hart and Brunson, you know, and DiVincenzo when they were at Nova. And, you know, they're they're great kids. I mean, Josh and Jalen especially. Um, I, I got to know a little bit. They're great kids. And they, Dante's know. like, what the heck? <laughs> well, he was redshirting that okay. year, you know. Yeah. And so, but I mean, <laughs> no, nothing against him uh, from Delaware. Um, as I point south toward Delaware. Uh, but they're great kids. And, you know, they're they're it's really crazy to see three guys from one college playing so well together it usually doesn't work but um it, it's um it's a special group and i don't think the sixers have any chance in game five welcome to our football podcast this is eagle eye presented by nissan he's ruben frank just venting a little i'm dave zangaro yeah vent away i get it it was uh ruined my sunday a little bit yeah. but uh, we're moving forward some news we're going to get in this look back at the draft and uh, later in the podcast, we'll kind of go through what we think the roles might be for all of these rookie draft picks. But the Eagles made some news since the draft on Sunday. Actually, they came out and they signed Makai Becton, a former first round pick, played for the Jets, has 30 career starts under his belt, has played left and right tackle. What do you make of the signing room? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it happened something like 24 hours after Howie said, you know, I, I'm surprised we didn't get out of the first few rounds with an offensive lineman and we just talked about it on the podcast saturday night they don't really have a swing tackle fred johnson who's you know i mean he's their top backup offensive tackle coming out of the draft and he had a good camp last year but let's be honest i mean i'm not sure he's the guy you want going in a left tackle um so you get a guy who's look he's he's not a great player uh, he's not a pro bowler, but he's a guy with experience who can play on both sides. And I don't know if you're going to do better um, for a backup swing tackle who can handle either side. He just turned 25 like two weeks ago. Happy uh, birthday. You know, as long as he's healthy, you know, he's had a couple pretty bad injuries. He missed all of 22 and most of 21. Um, but he played healthy last year. Didn't have a great year, but he, he was okay. Um, and just you know the the jets didn't tender him at all they just kind of let him hit free agency and i didn't even realize he was a free agent that he wasn't with the jets anymore uh, he very quietly was just one of those free agents who didn't sign anywhere um but uh you can't do better than makai beckton as a backup tackle yeah and he was a former first round pick 11th pick 11th overall pick Look, he's not that. They're not. I, I think we get ahead of ourselves with the reclamation project, and yes. that's exciting to think about. Can he come in here and like become that player under Jeff Salen? The odds of that are not great. I think there, maybe there's a little possibility yeah. of that, but it, like realistically, he's coming in here to be a backup tackle who, you know, if there's an injury, can get you through a few games. Yeah. And exactly. I think you can do worse than that. And now, the one thing you mentioned the injuries, and I think that kind of leads itself to like why. The reclamation project might not be there. Like, if these injuries have taken a toll yeah. on him, he's a massive dude. I mean, he's he uh, he's he's like J.C. Latham size. That they're like the two most similar. Um, Becton six seven three sixty three. He's massive, and he used to move 
really well for a guy that's that big. If the injuries are taking a toll, he might not move that well anymore. But, you know, I, I think he's coming in here to be a backup. Yeah. And like you said, you could do a lot worse. Um, if he can be Big V, then that's a, that's a good move. Yeah. Now, I have had people ask me, what about maybe thinking he can play guard and pushing Kyler Steen for guard? I don't think that's why he's here. I think he's here to be the backup swing tackle. Yeah. Uh, for a few reasons. First, I think they want Tyler Steen to start. Even if they're not in love with Steen, I think they're going to give him every opportunity. He was a third round pick last year. Yeah. Like they're going to give him every opportunity to win that job. Uh, and also, like Beck, I, I know they like big guards, but I, yeah. I mean, he, he's really big. And for our international uh, listeners and viewers, He's 201 centimeters tall and 164 kilograms, uh, according to Pro Football Reference. I never noticed they had metric heights and weights <laughs> before, but they do. So nice. I think we should do everything in metric for our international. I like that. They'll probably appreciate that. Yeah, I think we should do that. So um, how many stone is he, if we have any Brits listening? Um, I guess he would be. Um, What's a stone? 20 pounds? 20 pounds, right? I guess he'd be uh, 18 stone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I uh, gave him about what five five million. You know, up to five point five million. We know the up to is probably doing some heavy lifting there, right? Like if he makes All Pro first team yeah. in the Hall of Fame in the next month. And he's, you know, I think there there are reasons he was available in in late April. Now, like what what those reasons? Like if a, a veteran is available in late April, it's either the NFL tells you what they think of him, or he's asking for too much money. Or maybe a combination of those two factors. Yeah, and well, I mean the Jet. Yeah, now the Jets signed a couple. They signed uh, the guy from Dallas, um, Tyron, and they signed some another veteran tackle, hmm. who, uh, but, and let him go. But yeah, it's it's a little surprising. But I don't think only a lot of teams are looking to pay a backup guard, a backup tackle five or whatever. It might be three and a half, probably. But. I don't know. I think that's backup tackle yeah, money. It is. The teams must have been scared scared by the injuries. What for? Former... I mean, there were also like it was like a saga with him in the Jets. There was it was, it was like you know the teams like putting it out there he's not working hard enough. Like yeah. he's not. So I, I think there were some issues there that might have scared teams away as well. Can you name either of the former Eagles that went to the same high school as uh, I don't even know as Mackay Becton? He's from Virginia. Um, one you covered. And one was just a little bit before your time. Highland Springs. Highland Springs, yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, the one from uh, from earlier was Macho Harris. Okay. But the one you covered was Kayvon Wallace. Kayvon, okay. Same high school. Storm's coming. Storm's one of my coming. favorite quotes of all time. <laughs> Kayvon Wallace was about to get some play some playing time, and he said, "A storm's coming." He played well before he got hurt. Mm -hmm. Six games he yeah. started. Played pretty well. Yeah. But anyway. It wasn't a storm. <laughs> we're not here. There was a little, you know, a little yeah. drizzle. <laughs> a, little, a little wind, a little blustery of, day. Of showers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I, look, I'm curious to see what Beckman looks like when he gets here. I, I think it, it's a signing that made sense. When we look through, like, this is the roster after the draft. It was, to me, a pretty glaring hole. Yeah. You can argue maybe, like, if you don't love the idea of Steen starting, maybe right guard was a bigger need. But. No, to me, like if if Steen is the starter, and I think they want to let him start, or at least give him the first crack at it, backup tackle was a position that I thought they really needed, especially after they drafted some interior backups in the in, in the draft. Yeah, um, you know, we've talked a lot about Steen. I'm not down on Steen. I I, I just don't know. I think you know, I, um, he I thought he held his own in that Dallas game. I thought he was he was okay against a pretty good front. Um, it's the first time he had played. I mean, he had any snaps on offense before that. Um, so we'll see. Um, I'm, uh, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I think, uh, you know, it's a little, not a red flag. It's like a pink flag that they started Sua over him last pink year. Flag. Yeah. No, I wouldn't go all the way red flag with that because we know their deference to veterans. But yeah, yeah, that, you know, raised my attention a little bit. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like they've been all in on Tyler Steen. Yeah. What are you basing that on? Just that Sua started those games? Sua started, um, you know, when Nick was asked about the right guard spot, 
uh, what was that, the combine, he didn't mention Tyler Steen immediately. And you would think you'd probably mention him first, like, yeah. and they'd be top of your mind. Like, yeah. yeah, Tyler Steen, we have this guy we drafted in third round in year two. We redshirted him. We're ready for him to play this year. Uh, but I, I, they did put his locker at the right guard spot, which is not by accident. Yeah. But maybe a little bit by default. He might have just forgotten, like Stout didn't remind him who the right guard was. But it, it it is yeah it, it, I I I think you're onto something. Yeah. Get that sense a little bit. Yeah, and with Beckton, I kind of give Stout the benefit of the doubt. If if Stout says G- give me give me Mackay Beckton, I can I can turn him into a, a backup tackle. You go get Mackay Beckton, and for Beckton, like it might be his best shot to to save his career. Yeah, and while I don't think like a full bore reclamation project is um, is what he's here for. Having stout certainly doesn't hurt, mm-hmm. um, but it's a one-year deal. If, you know, if we'll see him a lot in the preseason, and um, and who knows? I mean, if if he if he puts something good on tape, either then or during the season, if he has to play, then maybe he'll get a big deal next year. In the that wouldn't season. shock me like, if he has to play four games this year and play as well. Yeah. Well, look what Big V got mm-hmm. uh, from the Lions. Yeah. Even so. like Andre Dillard, who was younger at that yeah. point. Not that much younger. Not, not that much younger. Yeah. He's going to be 26 next year. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, and Andre Dillard hadn't really played that much, but he hadn't played enough to show that he couldn't play, <laughs> whereas true. Becton has played quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I think if he, if he has to play four games and he looks good, he could get a big contract. Yeah, hey, it wouldn't surprise maybe me. Maybe the Eagles got a comp pick out of it. I'm sure Howie's already thinking about that comp pick. Yeah. Already knows who he's going to trade it to. Or if he doesn't play at all, but they like him behind the scenes... And he doesn't have a big contract offer. And you sure. sign him again. Yeah. And like what I think it's unlikely. Let me put that out there first. I think it's unlikely. But is there one door of a thousand where he's the future right tackle? I think I think that's I think there's a five percent chance of that. Okay. Yeah. One door out of a thousand. Uh yeah, it's probably a little more likely than that. Not a whole lot, but I don't I mean, we don't know how long Lane wants to do this. Well, he said he after the season he said he thinks he has a couple more good years left in him. Yeah. But he didn't say how many total years he might Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got with, some bad ones. At with the his end salary, he out. might want to you know, yeah. I'll do I'll do a couple <laughs> bad ones. <laughs> um no, but I think it's fair to assume Lane will play two or three more years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he is so young. I mean a guy who just turned 25 who has four years in the league is yeah. pretty rare. Yeah. And he's only played two of those years, but mm-hmm. you're right. Still but still 30 starts. 30 starts. That's not nothing. Yeah. I feel like his rookie year was his best year. I mean, it was only. Yeah. No, yeah, no, I totally agree. I thought as a rookie, we all thought, whoa, they, they might have hit this. They, they have something there. And then the injuries kind of piled up. And yeah. And it was there, you know, it was like a little bit of a, a soap opera with him and the Jets. There was some drama there. And last year, I don't think he played particularly well, but he stayed healthy, and that's that was almost as important. He was uh, two picks before um, Tampa took Tristan Wirfs. He's a pretty darn good player. Yeah. A few picks before CeeDee Lamb, a few picks before Justin Jefferson. A Who did the Eagles take that year? Well, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> now they have backup tackle figured out. Yeah. Look at this roster. What are the positions, you know, how he said they're not going to go sit by the pool or whatever he said. So they're going to try to find more talent. What positions do you think make the most sense if they are going to go out and find more talent? Um, I think safety is a position where they could certainly use some depth. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. They have, they have CJ, they have Reed Blankenship. Right. Um, they're gonna have Sydney at some point. Yeah, we don't know when. We don't know when. I think there's a really good chance we see we see Cooper DeGene, and we'll get into the roles for the rookies. I think if I'm trying to find him the path to playing time, I think that might be it. It's possible. I don't know. I I'd be afraid to bring in a veteran safety that could potentially block a young player from playing. Because they're so eager to get their young guys on the field. Well, I don't want to give them any reasons not to. No, I agree. I mean, I'd rather see Cooper DeGene play, but I'm 
you know, that's one position that comes to yeah. mind. Well, that, Justin Evans is available. Yeah. Uh, is he healthy? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. Probably not. Uh, how about linebacker? I think so. Right now, you know, you, you have you have Devin White, you have N'Kobe Dean, you drafted Jeremiah Trotter Jr., you have Oren Burks, maybe Zach Bond can play a little bit off ball. He's probably yeah. more of an edge guy. Yeah. I mean, it's not a great group, but I also don't have a lot of confidence that it's a group they're excited to upgrade either. Yeah, they just, um, yeah, they've had opportunities to do that, mm -hmm. and they haven't taken advantage, so... Um, it's a little scary. I mean, we I, don't... yeah, I think they're going to get the training camp kind of like they did last year, see what they have. And then again, if they're not good enough, they'll just go sign Zach Cunningham. That's the danger of waiting, though. You know, you, I mean, I guess mm -hmm. Zach Cunningham will probably be available. I don't think a lot of guys are going to get signed between now and training camp. I don't right. know if there's like much more risk involved. The risk was getting to this point, but that's what I mean. I, waiting includes yeah. the last. Two months, three months. Yeah, well, that's down the drain already. Yeah. No, I just I just don't think they're good enough at that position. And we're all kind of acting like Devin White's gonna not us, but Devin White's gonna like magically, you know, be what he was a few years ago, but he hasn't really shown that. Um it's a little scary. Yeah, and, I think he's like right now, if they started the season, it's Devin White and and Nicobe Dean. Yeah. I don't know if it can be Nicobe Dean. And Jeremiah Trotter Jr. ever. I mean, that's just too small. Yeah. Um, and you know, look, Trot's a five, and you know, it's a great story, but it's it's hard to imagine a fifth round rookie getting on the field at linebacker for them. Is it? Well, I mean, didn't take TJ Edwards that long as an undrafted guy. Didn't take Nick Gary that long as a fifth round pick, who was a safety in college. Yeah. It's just the nature of the position here. I don't think it's like indicative. Like league wide, but you're, now you're comparing them to Nate Gary. No, I, I mean, I, I just don't think they have enough there, and it's nothing against Trot. I mean, I, but, I mean, I think we all agree. I just don't think they're going to do it. Yeah, um, and I mean, Nicobe is, is a great kid, and he's going to put in the work. He's, but we haven't seen it. It's, it's just a lot. I mean, there's question marks about every one of these line, off ball linebackers. You know, so is linebacker position you think they should add? I think they should, but I think they should have done it already. And I don't think they're going to really. I mean, if Zach Cunningham is ends up being the answer, I mean, I just think they should have been a little better than that. Good tape last year, according to Howie. Yeah. Did you guys see Zach Cunningham? Ooh. He actually had a good year. And then there's old Ben Van Sumer in. Sure. I didn't mention Ben. You're right. He deserves to be mentioned there. Yeah, because he might be their best off-ball linebacker. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't think it's enough, and you know, we'll see how it plays out. And you know, it's uh, I'm not knocking Trot. I mean, I just, uh, he, you know, I mean, does he have the frame to get bigger? Do you think? Um, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think he's ever going to be a a hulking linebacker. He'll never be. What would his dad play at like 245, <laughs> <Yeah>. 250? <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't even compare. Like, I shouldn't even go there. But um, I mean, he's look, he's he was a real playmaker at Clemson. So he, there's something there. Um, I, I'd love to see them find a role for him. Yeah. Well, let's get to that in a little bit when we talk about the roles for sure. the rookies. But any other positions you think they might add? Now, um, and we're talking, it is, it's, we're yeah. recording this April 30th. So we're not looking in the, the rear view here. We're saying going forward, what position could they add? They've, you know, they've added a couple tight ends. I, I don't think they're going to add more. I mean, they added CJ Uzama, Uzama, uh, Matt Jenkins from the Niners, mm -hmm. right? EJ Jenkins. Um, Albert O is back. They still have Calcaterra. Um, none of those guys really excite me that much. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think they're going to add any more. I uh, think no to go is still here. Right. Yeah. And um, castles. Mm -hmm. We'll get to the undrafted guys. I'm sorry. Later in the week. I'm sorry. I keep, you know, messing up your strict <laughs> rundown. Uh, I do think I, I wish they had taken tight end a little more seriously. T T E two during off season, maybe drafted mm -hmm. a guy. They just don't draft tight ends. No. When they do, they're really good. Ertz, Selleck, and, and Goddard. Yeah. Um, 
Clay Harbor. Sorry, Clay. Clay's sitting there at home saying, they, it should be. They drafted – Howie's only drafted four tight ends. Yeah. Who was the kid from Florida? Uh, who kept Cornelius getting, Ingram? Yeah, he kept getting hurt. Yeah, he was before Howie was the GM. Was he really? Mm -hmm. Cornelius Ingram, I think, was 2008. That was like five years ago. <laughs> it was not. He was a great kid, man. He would stand uh, out there um, at Lehigh telling stories about Tebow for hours after practice. <laughs> it was great. Be like, you know, what do they do that? I, they do that thing where like, before games where I guess they have like a gauntlet that the players go through okay. and Cornelius and groom be telling stories like Tebow come through and the girls are all passing <laughs> out. <laughs> it was great. Anyway, did you look that up? What year? No, because oh. he's, he doesn't have a bio cause he never got in a game. He's on pro football reference, but I, it will take some, Oh, okay. Um, some actual typing, um, 2009. Yeah. So it was, okay. it was a draft before, I was close before Howie. All right. But uh, he was here under Howie. Sure. Uh, the Eagles made some cuts. Not surprising. Uh, as I told Howie after the draft, the math wasn't mathing for me. Uh, they, 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 he said they had a seven man draft class. They drafted nine players. They had 77 on the roster. And then after they add Mackay Becton, and I'm going, well, wait a second. Too many. Well, after the draft, bodies. I said to him, don't you have to cut some people? He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. You can't have 85 on your roster. Yeah. So uh, they did. Noah Ellis. Uh, Griffin Eber, Taiwan Mullen, and Lafita Smith all got cut. I guess Noah Ellis is the most notable. I mean, he's been around for a couple of years, um, got some opportunities. Christian Ellis's brother, mm -hmm. half brother, maybe. Um, yeah, big dude, and uh, I will probably see him around again. I don't know. Um, he was one that I, I was really excited to watch when they uh took him undrafted out of Idaho couple years ago because he, he kind of fit that big body mold yeah uh, i felt like if they needed a backup nose maybe he could push and we just haven't really seen it yeah taiwan mullen's kind of been here and there like back and forth a little bit yeah i think he actually got in a game mm -hmm. as a practice squad call up last year yeah griffin eber makes sense to i mean all these guys kind of make sense to cut you, you brought in two receivers in the draft you, you obviously brought in a couple defensive backs so taiwan mullen's gone and then uh, let's see the Smiths, a backup interior offensive lineman. Just drafted that two. Drafted two. So I think all these these guys, unfortunate for them that they don't even get a chance to get to a, a spring practice, but makes sense. And uh, you had to make room for some undrafted players. So you got to get younger at some yeah. point. It, it's tough. I mean, these guys have been around for, you know, for a couple months and they just, just sent on their way. It's tough business. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff coming up on the other side. You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that'll make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Celebrity cook Steve Martorano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martorano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations at Martorano's Prime on Open Table. Rube, so on Saturday we talked about just the, the craziness of all these trades. Yeah. By the end of, after not making a single trade on day one of the draft, how he makes eight over the final two days, you crunch some numbers. <laughs> just... How were you even able to keep this straight? Yeah, so I took, every, I, I I ran down every pick that Howie had in his possession at some point over the weekend, and I'll just give you the pick numbers: uh, 22, 40, 50, 53, 78, 86, 94, 98, 120, 123, 127, 132, 152, 155, 161, 164, 171, 172, 185, 190, 201, and 210, with an asterisk on 98 because actually traded that one away before the draft, but they did have it. Um, that went to the Steelers in the uh, Kenny Pickett deal. But um, they started out with, you know, with you, we all know the picks. They started out with 22, 50, 53, 120, 161, 171, 172, and 210. They finished, the only ones they actually used out of that group were 22 and um, 
which uh, obviously went on went for uh, Quinion, and one other one 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 um, seventy two, Trevor um, Keegan, which was a Trevor Keegan. Yeah. So out of those twenty twenty one picks, they, I mean, they drafted two. There were two two picks that were here at the beginning and at the end, basically, is is what it comes down to. And there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There were nine picks that they acquired and traded along the way. So there were nine picks that they had that they didn't start out with and they didn't finish with, but just kind of came through. Um, some of the picks went through five teams. I mean, it's crazy. Um, and some of the players that were taken with picks that they had at one point. Um, uh, Jalen Wright, the Tennessee running back, Dominique Hampton, the Washington safety, Jalen Simpson, the um, the safety that the Colts drafted, Jordan Travis, the Florida State quarterback, Peyton Wilson, the guy that um, I was kind of hoping they would draft the linebacker from NC State with all the injuries, uh, Ben Sinnott, the Kansas State. I mean, there's like all these players that were taken with Eagles picks. Um, it's fun. And so I'm going to have a story kind of running down each pick how it got here and where it ended up uh and you kind of look at the um it's like what's the word um uh that 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 uh, genealogy the genealogy of of these picks uh and it's it's kind of cool and it just kind of shows you how uh adept how he is at manipulating picks and you know and that doesn't even consider the three picks that he just conjured out of thin air for next year he started out with eight picks, finished with 12. So one, he went from eight to nine this year and added a, what, a three or four and a five? or Yeah, a three, four, and five next yeah. year. Uh, so it's, it's really his his mastery of using picks to generate other picks um, is untouchable. And it's funny because you asked him, like, you know, how do you keep track of all this? And he was almost like he didn't understand the questions. Like, it's just. He does it so naturally and so he's just so used to it, I guess. But I, I mean, it took me two days to get it all kind of squared away. Yeah. Well, he has a head start because he's doing doing it and knows they're coming. Yeah. But I'm just curious about like, I mean, how do they, they, they must have some sort of board in the draft room, you know, where they've, I mean, they've got. I'd imagine it's on the computer. Yeah. But I mean, I would think you'd have something everyone can see. Yeah, you can kind of have it in front of you and say, "Well, the Chargers have these, and we, you know, I don't know. It's amazing. Um, Twenty-one picks. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he keeps it all straight in his head." And I, I think a key to this is we know the Eagles are always searching for market inefficiencies. Yeah, they clearly think this is one. Yeah, because you know, you look at especially like day two, and you look at their maneuvering, and the classic like the Jimmy Johnson trade value chart tells you they did not get close to recouping the value whereas like some of the more modern models models that i think they're more likely to be using right. show that they did recoup the value and they almost made it a wash after they traded up to get cooper de i'm sure they're using their own model of this uh or, or at least one that is a little more modern so like i think that's a big part of this is they're trying to to get the most out of this stuff and I'm guessing that that was part of all those trades. And then especially like future draft picks, the rest of the league devalues future picks and the Eagles don't. And yeah. I think that's another area where they think they're gaining an advantage. Yeah, you're right. And I mean, I think a three in a three next year to me is more valuable than a four this year. I don't think general consensus around the league. I think they're equal. I think Which they're is, Makes no sense. It really. makes no sense. But there's this win now mentality in a lot of teams and and a lot of GMs, especially uh, this year to next year, where we think next year's class is going to be better. Yeah, you know that um, 18 of the 32 GMs are new since 2021. So these guys are trying to save their jobs. They're trying to, and you do that by winning now and not thinking about next year, where Howie has this luxury of. You know, I think I think I can take this five and make it a, a one in 2029 mm -hmm. by just, you know, <laughs> trading it every year. Um, and he probably knows he, who he wants to draft with it in 2029. Um, so he's in a not a unique position because, I mean, there's guys like, you know, Loomis. And I mean, there's other guys who Josh have, Schneider has been around. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some guys who have that that same luxury, but uh, I don't know if anybody 
manipulates picks as well as Howie. Yeah, I think that's fair. All right, that's fun. Yeah, it, it's fun to. I wish I could do a better job keeping keeping it all straight during the draft. Well, I, I was actually okay because I was writing them all down as they happened, and I had. I know it's gonna surprise you, but I had I had it all laid out pretty pretty evenly. Yeah, I don't know why that doesn't shock me. Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, let's get into the roles for each of these picks, and we'll just go in uh, order they picked them. So we'll start off in the first round: Quinion Mitchell, twenty second overall. To me, this is really easy. Starting corner. Starting corner. Period. Now, is there a chance they get to camp and he's not a starting corner? Because I think that's almost likely, knowing Nick Sirianni. Yeah, I think there'll be a day, like two weeks, three weeks in a camp, two weeks in a camp, where all of a sudden, you know, like I think we'll see him take some reps, but mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we'll go out there and he'll be taking the first reps. Yeah. And a lot of it depends whether Bradbury's even here or not. Yeah, if Bradbury's here, I, I think he probably does – get up first yeah yeah and then they're in the position of all right well we got to at some point we got to bench bradbury but mm -hmm. um yeah i think um i think at some point we'll start seeing him take the reps with the ones if he's what we think he is and i think opening day in brazil he'll be the uh, he'll be the starting corner opposite slay yeah and i think like when they start off camp it'll be quinion mitchell on one side keely ringo on the other which is a really fun second pairing of corners yeah yeah I don't know they have a lot of outside corners. They do, and good yeah. problem to have. But it's like even if Isaiah Rogers is an outside corner, which they might move him to the nickel when he gets here. Uh, I mean, this is a lot. Yeah. Like, I, and we'll talk about Cooper Gene in a second, but I mean, where are they going to play him? Like, the, if he's an outside corner too, then you have like three lines. It's like hockey. Yeah, and then there's all those guys. I mean, Mario Goodrich is still here. Josh Job is still here. Um, I mean, there's there's yeah, there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I think they have 13. Yeah, Mario Goodrich, I'm sure, will be a full time nickel now. Yeah. Um, I think they have 14 corners on the roster. It's a lot. Yeah. Okay. So we're both in agreement there. Quinion Mitchell, he's a starter. Yep. He better be. You take him 22nd. The tricky one is Cooper DeGene. At 40, because we don't know what, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. If, if they took him at 22, I think we'd be saying the same thing about Cooper Jean as we're saying about, yeah, about Quinion Mitchell, but they didn't take him at 22, they took him at 40. And I think the thing that makes it complicated is we don't know what he is exactly. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what they think he is. Um, he is, you know, do they see him as a safety? They see him as a slot. They see him as an outside corner. Um, without knowing that, it's kind of hard to say where he fits in. Uh, I know they're going to get him on the field. Yeah, so th I think the tricky thing with him is, yes, he's super versatile. He can play all these spots, but he's also a rookie coming in to learn a, a not an easy defense. Yeah. A defense that, you know, it, it, it takes a while to learn anyway. I I think they've got to they, they've got to be a little slow. I don't think they can just say, here's three positions, learn them all in a new defense. I think they'll throw as much as they as he can retain Adam and I think it's it, a little dangerous. I mean the Sean Constantine thing is funny because they're you know they're both Iowa guys, but I mean I remember Jim Johnson saying sitting there saying, I'm like, you know, you're throwing everything at this kid. And he's and he was a four, I think. He's like, oh he can he can handle it. Yeah. He, he can handle it. It's not a problem. So I mean he's a smart kid. Um I think it'll be more than just one thing. I think it will be too, but um uh, he's got to line up somewhere. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they want a training camp. He's got to be somewhere. Where do you think that somewhere is? Slot. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Now, that might be his easiest path for playing time is, like, slot or safety. Just because we talked about how many outside corners they have. Yeah. I could see him being, like, the for certain matchups because he's a little bigger than, like, an Avante or CJ Gardner-Johnson. Yeah. Like, I, I could see him matching up against some tight ends or like a, like a, you know, if you have a bigger body slot receiver, I could see them playing the matchup game there a little bit. And right. that, that could be how he sees the field. I think safety is a little easier for him to, to crack the lineup than corner just based on the numbers. Could be. You have, you, you figure you have, uh, you have Reed and CJ Gardner Johnson at safety, but they'll run some three safety packages. So I think he could be the next guy out there. And that's, 
you know, assuming I don't, we don't know about Sidney Brown and where his health is. Yeah. I mean, they have a lot of D backs, um, a lot of movable pieces as D backs yeah. too. guys who can play multiple positions. When you're looking at Cooper and CJ and, and, Sydney. and Sydney, who like all three of those guys share a lot of traits. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I mean, how he said, um, I think I asked him this Saturday, um, that was a priority was, was kind of revamping that secondary and they've brought in a lot of pieces and if nothing else like i think cooper jean's gonna play a big role in special teams yeah yeah i think that's a given and but i think he'll be on i think they'll find a role for him on defense i think he'll he'll play i don't know 25 snaps from the get-go I think he'll be out there 20, 25. Uh, yeah, I could say like 20. Yeah. I'm probably on the lower end of that initially. But I also think the value in him too is that he can he could start at multiple spots yeah. if there's an injury. Yeah. And then special teams, we haven't talked about it a ton, but he was a great return man at Iowa. Yeah. I think he'll be in the mix on these new kickoffs. Yeah, that'll be fun to see how that plays out. Because I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't either. I... I think it's going to be more of an offensive play. Like I, I think there might even like you're going to want blockers out there. You might want more starters, especially on like the defensive side. I don't know. I think yeah. it'll be fun to watch. Yeah. I think the strategies are going to vary across the league. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have any idea until opening day either. Yeah, and uh, it was funny. Advantage. I mentioned that, and someone said, "Well, there's preseason." I was like, "If you think they're showing their hand in preseason, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention." Yeah, exactly. They're probably going to fair catch it in the preseason. But I think we'll at least get a sense of what type of player they're considering. And they're going to have to get some reps. I think they should screw with everyone and put like put Jordan, Jordan Mailata back out, out there mean, to fair catch it. They're going to have to get reps to the guys who are going to do get it. Get them in practice. They get them in practice. We'll see. We'll see. I, don't, I don't think they're going to give them game reps. We'll see practice. Sure. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Next one. Jalex Hunt, 94th overall in the third round out of Houston Christian. How much does he see the field? I don't think he will. Not at all. I don't think he will. I, you know, you'd love to see it happen, get a, get get him some sort of third down role somewhere. Uh, but I just think he's so raw. I think he's got so far to go. Um, and they've got bodies. I think a lot of it has to do with Nolan Smith. If he's healthy and he's given him any kind of productive snaps – you know, you have bright, you have, you know, you have some guys there. So yeah, so you go through the list and you have Bryce Huff and Josh Sweater the starters, and you have Brandon Graham, you have Nolan Smith. You're four deep already. Yeah. If they keep like a like a Patrick Johnson as the fifth and a special teamer, yeah. I mean, there's now maybe they, they don't keep a Patrick Johnson and Jalex Hunt slides into that fifth role and sees the field like very sparingly play special teams. I could see that. I could see him being a pretty good special teamer. Mm-hmm with his traits, but yeah, I think that's, what's going to happen. Um, but you know, again, if Nolan Smith's shoulder is an issue or he's just getting no production and this kid's ahead of schedule could get on the field because PG is only going to be playing like six snaps a game, maybe, maybe 15. He's playing more than six, maybe 15. I don't think he's going to play more than 15. Okay. Um, so I think it's unlikely. Uh, but I think if, I think it's possible if Nolan Smith is, for whatever reason, not a factor, uh, he could get on the field if he's ahead of schedule. Next one, fourth round, 127 overall, Will Shipley running back out of Clemson. Yeah, I don't think he'll, he'll have much of a role, um, especially with Saquon. I think he's just going to get so many touches. And Gainwell's going to get whatever's left over. I mean, we barely saw Boston Scott last year, just when there were yeah. some injuries. And, you know, Saquon's going to get a lot more touches than DeAndre Swift got, I would think. So um, I just don't think he'll have a role uh, to start out with, at least. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I think it's going to be, obviously, heavier Saquon than it was even Miles Sanders or DeAndre Swift. They like game well. In, in certain situations. Now, I think bringing in Saquon is going to take away a lot of the the gain wall role. Yeah. I don't think you need the receiving back. Yeah. Like, but I think Shipley 
they'll get him touches here and there. I think he'll be up on game day. Hmm. We'll keep three running backs up. Probably, yeah, they usually do. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to go in a game with two running backs. So I think he'll be up, and I think there'll be limited touches. But, you know, I, I think if there's an injury, he's the type of back that could go out there and can run behind the line and get you some yards. Like, I don't think he's going to be spectacular if he gets in there, but I, I think he could shoulder the load for a game thing. He didn't do. Yeah, I would think so. Um, I think Gainwell would get the first crack at that. Yeah. Um, well, Unless they really like Gainwell's role as just being the – Maybe. Yeah. Boston's still out there. Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, it's kind of disappointing he won't be here. Uh, he was a good eagle for a long time. He was. Fun eagle. One of our favorite eagles. Yeah. Se- security guard. Milton yeah. Williams' security detail was always hilarious yeah. at camp. But I wish him well. Good dude. Next one. Fifth round. Three fifth round picks. 152 overall. Anaya Smith. Slot receiver out of Texas A&M. Yeah, I'm curious to see what they'll do with him. I think he's a versatile kid. Um, they they might try to find some ways to get him on the field. Um, I like an Anaya Smith. Yeah, I, I do too. Um, you know, you're just getting like there's just only going to be so many reps, uh, but I think they will find some ways to use him. Um, kind of in that. Uh, <laughs> no, in that. Um, <laughs> in that. I don't know what role. Just. Just kind of gadget role. Find a couple snaps for him per game. I think he might be able to get on the field that way. Third receiver. What's the pecking order? In week one, not now. I mean, you got the two free agency signed. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how to rank those two. Um, Paris Campbell and Devontae Parker. Um I don't even know what you do with them. I, I don't know. I don't even know if they'll be here. Um, but I think one of those is most likely the three. I think Devontae Parker's probably in the pole position. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, most likely. But I think Anaya Smith with a good training camp can push them for some snaps. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Again, you want to get younger um, and faster. Another return guy. Could be. He's just a he's a fun guy. He could do a lot of things. Uh, I'd like to see him on the field. I would too. And I've talked up his ability with the ball in his hands, which is true. And I think they have a better shot to get him incorporated with Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator. On the flip side of that, it's not like there's a bunch of touches to go around, right? Not that many available. Uh, You have AJ, Devontae, Dallas Goddard, Saquon. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Nia Smith. (laughs) You're not going to touch the football. That's why I say like maybe two, three times a game. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see him do something just to – kind of get him a taste of it and, you know, have a couple gadget plays in there for him. Yeah. Second, fifth round pick, 155 overall. They trade up Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Uh, out of Clemson. Two Clemson guys. First Clemson guys since uh, Kayvon. Another Kayvon Wallace shout out. We, we've talked more about this, about Kayvon on this pod than like <laughs> when he was here. Um, yeah, Trot's an interesting one. Um, he should be a core special teamer. He'll be a very good special teamer. Um. And there's just not that many linebackers. You know, there's not that many linebackers. So, I mean, if, if, um, look, I mean, if, um, there's, if there's any injuries, like, what do you do next? Um, like you said, you can't have him and, uh, um, what's his name out there at the same time? Nicobe. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nicobe Dean. Um, so if Nicobe gets banged up, I mean, I, I would think he'd probably be, Probably play. Yeah. Or if Nakobe's just doesn't do anything. I could see him pushing for some playing time. I don't think it's crazy. I don't I don't think that's the most likely scenario. I think the most likely scenario right now is it's Devin White and Nakobe Dean week one starters. Yeah. I mean, even when Nakobe's been been healthy, he he just he just doesn't show up. He doesn't make a lot of plays. Even in practice, mm-hmm. he wasn't making a lot of plays. No, Trotter makes plays. At least he did in college. So um, I mean, Kobe did too. <laughs> yeah. uh, but um, I think he could. He might get a shot to get some playing time. Uh, I think it all depends on what they get from Kobe. Can't believe I forgot his name. And uh, yeah, could could linebacker this year in training camp be like safety last year? Interesting. 
Kinda where they just like rotate a bunch everyone. of different guys, try different combinations. Wouldn't surprise me. I, mean, I think, but I, I mean, I think Devin White's going to be constant. Does he become the sun in that universe? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, I guess you could play Van Sumeren with Nicobe or or Trot, but you know, then you're you got like no experience and. Uh, but I'm just mean size wise. Like yeah. you is know. Oren Burks the uh, the Justin Evans of the group? The the late uh like the veteran who no one thought about until he's out there in week one. You go, what the heck happened? I was proud of that story in training camp last year. I'm like he's getting every rep. <laughs> like nobody even knows because they're on that far field. Justin, and we're not allowed to talk to him. But he was getting every rep. I was like. Dave, I think he's going to start. You're like, no, he's not going to start. He's got every rep. Really. He shouldn't have. You were on the other field. I don't. I don't remember what the details, but no. I think no. it was a uh, joint practice. It might have been. Yeah. That was a mistake. Yeah, they. Yeah, we know anything about joint practices this year? We heard anything about that? No, I haven't gotten that far. What if they'll do them in like Portugal? No, that's no, that's not in South America. Like Uruguay, if they wanted to like practice, practice their Portuguese, is that what you're just, saying? I had the Go wrong to Portugal continent. first. I had the wrong continent there, and I'm a big geography guy too. But I meant to say like Paraguay, you know, like and then you go over to Brazil. Um, I'll just shut up about that. But, uh, but yeah, I I, I think there's going to be some kind of role for Trot, and training camp will be really interesting with the linebackers because I don't think anything's etched in stone. Mm-hmm. All right, next one, fifth round, 172 overall. You mentioned one of the original picks. Yeah. Trevor Keegan, offensive guard for Michigan. Yeah, you know, I I think he I think he's a good player. I think he's got a chance to be a pro. Um could he compete at right guard if it's not going well with Steen? I, I think it's Tyler Steen's job to lose. I do too, but if he loses it, you got this kid who could be in the mix. Yeah. I look I look at it this way. So last year we thought maybe there'd be a competition between Cam Jurgens and Tyler Steen. And there Never wasn't. Happened. It was just Cam Jurgens from day one through the final day of it was his, every rep was his. I think we could see a similar situation with Tyler Steen. I would agree. Where yeah. it's just, you know, we think well, maybe uh Trevor Keegan, you know, maybe a, a Matt Hennessy, but really it's just they're gonna plug and play the guy they drafted I think a so. year before. Yeah, there's no reason not to. And, I mean, you got to get him as many reps yeah. as, as you can. Sure. Now, if he struggles, then it's a different story. Then I think you open it up. Yeah, and I wonder how long it would take to – I mean, I think they'll give him a good couple weeks before they mm-hmm. would – you know. I mean, we could be sitting there saying, man, he's having a hard time. But I think they'll stick with him for at least a few weeks. And it's not like there's – like a – uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know who the next guy would be in there. Probably Hennessy. It'd probably be Hennessy. Yeah. So unless Hennessy is just the backup center. Yeah, that's possible too. Mm-hmm. And Staff's going to make these calls, but uh, but I think that's Keegan's probably best path to playing would be if there's some comp at right guard and yeah, Steen struggles and he plays and and Keegan plays really mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Other than that, we think backup. Yeah. 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 Uh, next one, sixth round, 185 overall. Johnny Wilson, uh, 6'6", 6'7", 230 pound receiver. Yeah, I think um, he might get some run in place of Tobias tonight at uh, power <laughs> forward. I'd like that, honestly. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's not going to probably play. get a rebound, huh? He's Sorry. not going to play, <laughs> but uh, he'll be fun to watch in camp. Yeah, I don't. There's just not a for me. There's there's not a path to playing time for him unless like they want to run out that Hakeem Butler play. Yeah, they. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, unless it's like a 2020 situation where all your receivers get hurt, mm. he could be like the Travis Fulgham yeah. type of guy. But I just don't see a path. To there really time. isn't one. Yeah, he can make the roster. Yeah, and be inactive every week. Maybe he'll be a call up. Maybe he can make the roster. Even that's a little tricky. Yeah, it is. It is. If they keep the top two, they keep the two um, signings. Veterans. Veterans is four. Like, is Covey still around? That's five. Anaya Smith is six. Yeah, I forgot about Covey. He's a seventh receiver. Yeah. You think Covey's in danger, by the way? No. 
Okay. No, I don't. This is because they drafted guys with return capability. Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's really good. He's good. He's really good at it. So, yeah. So, Johnny Wilson, practice squad. Okay. Uh, and the last pick, 190 overall, Dylan McMahon. I don't see a path to playing kind this year. I think he's a developmental backup center, center only, too. That's what I said the other day. Yeah. And you said he can play guard in a pinch. Yeah. Um, he most likely practice squad guy. I would think probably it depends on how many linemen they keep. Yeah. But he's, I mean, he's, he's a guy that really needs a year to get stronger. I think so. He is under yeah. 300 pounds. Yeah. Well, they listen to 299. Yeah. <laughs> he's under 300. I don't know, that was a combine weight, right? Yeah. But he's got to get bigger and stronger yeah. and, just kind of learn the NFL game. So, yeah. yeah. I guess it'll depend how many they keep. Starting five, Fred, Mackay, Hennessy, Dylan Keegan. Keegan. Dylan Keegan. I just made them one person. <laughs> uh, Trevor Keegan. That's You're up to nine. That's nine. Yeah. Yeah. That might be it. Keep ten. It's him. Am I missing someone? You said Beckton, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. Brett Toth. I don't see it there. Lucita Smith. <laughs> He's gone. I mean, they like a Darian Kennard. Yeah, they do seem to. Uh, they brought him in on a futures deal, so maybe he can push for that last spot. If it's not, I think that'd be Dylan McMahon. Like, that'd be more likely than Dylan McMahon. Yeah. Interesting. Unless they just don't want to lose a draft pick, which sometimes happens. Yeah. And he was a six, not a seven. So mm -hmm. give him a little better chance. All right. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, which of these guys, like after the first two picks, could you see like really making an impact in year one? Because I think the first two, we, we kind of understand that they're in a different class. Yeah. I'd say Trot, uh, you know, not because of who his dad or anything, but I just think he's got the out of out of the guys from the third round on, he's probably got the clearest path to mm -hmm. playing time. Yeah, I think you're right. I think for me it'd be him or Anaya Smith. Yeah, but I think there's obviously more in front of Anaya Smith than there is in front of Trot. So I think I'd agree with you. I think he and even just as a, a special teamer, he should be on all the teams units. I love how when you when you say. Uh, I have to agree with you. You sound so sad about it. Like you just like it, it makes for kills. You it makes for better content when we disagree. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> I like an argument, please. <laughs> I do get. It. We never. That's the one thing I'm proud of. We never like disagree just to disagree. Like we don't try to create that. That's true. That content. I think there are places to do that. We don't do that. But I do get excited when we disagree. I just get shocked when we agree. It doesn't happen much. <laughs> That's right. fun. Yeah, it was good. That's all I had there. Yeah, it was fun. Anything else here? No. All right. Uh, I've been, uh, I'm all in on Keon Coleman. Yeah, he's fun. He's unbelievable. Yeah. If you guys haven't watched that, like go back and watch all the clips from Bill's social media team. Uh, he might be like my favorite rookie. <laughs> he's hilarious. Yeah, he's funny. Hey, I, I did want to mention, um, if you guys haven't seen the video that the Eagles social media team put out of uh, Howie and and Nick and Mr. Lori, Jeff Lori talking to um, Trot Jr., it's really it's really something else. It's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And just seeing Jeff Lori get so emotional talking to him, um, yeah, it's really neat. And we don't talk about Jeff Lori enough, but. Man, the Eagles are lucky to have him. Yeah, it was a cool moment because you see the emotion from him. And, like, for a lot of owners, this is just all about it's a good investment having an NFL team. Yeah. And it certainly is. Like, no, he's not he's not losing money no, he's owning not. the Eagles. But uh, he does really care about this. And with a lot of owners, it's not their primary job. Right. Right? They have, like, a lot of other things going on. Uh, it, he has other things going on, but his primary job is – being the owner and CEO of, of the Philadelphia Eagles. So uh, he's there every day. Yeah. Yeah. Not every day. Well, sometimes we'll be down in, in Florida at his mansion once in a while. Yeah. But if I had a mansion in Florida, I'd probably be there quite a bit too. Well, the, the last owner was 
was in Florida more than him. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, but it was cool. And he, he gets emotional in it. He, he, he brings up uh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr.'s mother who uh, recently passed away. So that, it, was a, it was a cool moment. Uh, I like all those videos. I will watch all those videos 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah. The Jalex Hunt one was really funny. Uh, called Howie Roseman Big Pimpin. Oh yeah, that which was is good. which is yeah. you know just the uh, they like confidence and the confidence to you know your boss is <laughs> calling you telling you they're hiring you be like oh what's up Big Pimpin <laughs> is really funny. Yeah, he's a funny kid. He's gonna be fun. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'd rank him as ooh. How about like in fun rankings just for our purposes? Would he be at the top of the list based on our uh, initial? meetings we haven't talked to the two receivers we didn't yet. talk to a couple of the guys um i think trevor keegan seems like he'll be like a good quote i don't know if he'll be yeah super fun he seems fun there were like the videos of him chugging beers yeah a la eagles offensive line style yeah um yeah that did go a little viral um yeah probably those guys Cooper Jean seems like a, a fun but like maybe a little shy introverted yeah i like him though he came out after his presser and mm -hmm. introduced himself to all the yeah. writers i like that Quinn Mitchell was way more comfortable in person than he was on an awkward Zoom call Very after serious, he got drafted. Kind of minded guy. A little serious. I can see a little fun side to him. Yeah. It yeah. is. I always enjoy getting to meet the new players when they come in. Yeah. Yeah. Because something like you, you have to like put a personality to like you know wide receiver, whatever you know. It's always interesting to me. Like, I mean, Cooper DeGene's a kid from a small town. You know, he played in a small town. Um, he was born in a small town. But, I mean, I don't know if he's ever been to, like, to Philly or spent any time. But, like, all of a sudden, like, you, you know, you get drafted, and here you are in Philadelphia, like, facing the media. And, you know, I'm always amazed how how well these, these guys carry themselves in that situation. Like, yeah. 24 hours ago, they didn't know where they were going to, be drafted and we can give the eagles credit for this they try to prepare them for the attention as best as they can and they they take that into account like if they if there's a kid who they don't think can handle playing in this city they won't draft him. i mean that's part of their evaluation is like you know how's this guy going to react to football's big here i noticed that yeah have you um and it's not the easiest thing, and we've seen guys that can handle it and haven't been able to handle it. So I, th I think that that's a big part of it. not a, maybe a huge part of their evaluation, but it's part of it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Wrap this up? Yeah. All right. Uh, if you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please do us a favor, rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button, subscribe there as well. We'll be back with you later in the week. That's all we've got for today, though. For Rube, I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan.